Hi everybody, my name is Marilyn and I just want to say welcome to my channel. As you can see by the title, <laughs> I am going to be talking about an experience that I had, but before I get into that, I just wanted to talk on my channel a little bit about some things that God has been doing in my life and how he's just been transforming me some things that he's been pruning out of me and just how my relationship with him has been growing and how he has just been how he's just been working in my life <laughs> so uh by the title i will be talking about the time where god led me to take out my nipple piercings so, <laughs> it's actually kind of kind of weird to kind of talk about this, but I feel like this story could help somebody. Um, this won't just be s specifically for people with nip nipple piercings, but mainly to be a story that aims to tell how important it is to be obedient to God and how God just honors our obedience. So I'm going to be talking about this, but the moral of the story is being obedient to God whenever he says do something or don't do something. So make sure you do it or don't do it. So I want to go back to the time in 2019. This was the time where I was in college and I had just turned 19 years old. So this is 2019, I just turned 19 years old. It was a couple of days, it was like the weekend after my birthday. And my friends and I, we were in college and we were all deciding what we wanted to do that night. So we were talking amongst ourselves and saying, hey, why not go to Charlotte and get some piercings so i went to a school in rock hills south carolina and rock hills like this close to charlotte north carolina so it was easy for us to just get in the car hop in and drive to get these piercings and i had always been thinking about getting piercings but well getting nipple piercings it kind of crossed my mind a couple times but it wasn't something that I was eager to do it wasn't something that I was just gonna hop in the car and go get by myself but because you know we were just having fun we were just going out I was like you know what? I might as well just get it you know what's the harm in it um, I'm not really a piercing person I I'm okay with just having my ears pierced I'm not somebody who was really fond of having any piercings on my face. I'm okay without it. But I was like, you know what? I'll get my nipples pierced. No harm in it. So we went to Charlotte uh, one night and we all, or most of us, all of us or, or most of us, but I know most of us got piercings that night. I got, again, my nipples pierced and it was it was all right you know i got them i feel like i have a high pain tolerance so it didn't hurt it hurt but it wasn't unbearable and went back home they healed pretty nicely it was okay and i had been going on living with these things just freely and i honestly would forget about them until you know it was time to take a shower or something but they had never caused me any problems and mind you i got these things in 2019 but it wasn't until 2021 <laughs> so throughout this time throughout my time in college i had been working and i had really been drawing closer to god i had really been like god I want a deeper relationship with you. I want to know more about you. Uh, I, had, I feel like I had 
feel like college was a time where I was really, 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 really seeking, seeking the face of God, especially in 2019. It just seemed like that was a time where I was really eager to know more about him, eager to have a deeper relationship with him. I was going to Bible studies on campus. I was praying in my room all the time and just saying, God, I want to know you. I want to have a better relationship with you. All that not, all the nine. And mind you, this is the end of 2019 that this is happening, that I'm starting to want to grow closer to God. Now, before I got these piercings and before the time of 2019, I had still been praying, still wanting a, a relationship with God. But as the years went on, the crave for him was getting stronger and stronger. I'm like, God, I need you. I want a relationship with you. I can't do this by, my, by myself. <laughs> I can't do this by myself. Um, things were happening in my life and um, the things that I was losing, me not being able to focus in school, a whole lot of stuff that I'll probably share my testimony about on this channel eventually that I'll that I'll talk about but it was just some things that I was just like God I, I really just want a relationship with you I'm tired of uh tired of tired of just tired of just doing this thing called life without you <laughs> I've been messing all this up so I need you and I was really drawing near to him especially towards the end of 2019 then 2020 hits and we all know what happened during 2020 2020 was that time where it was just hey things are just going haywire we all know 2020 made history during the pandemic during the lockdowns and that was definitely during a time where i had the opportunity to be locked up in my room and pray where god truly met me and he started dealing with some issues of my heart some things that i had been dealing with and the things that I was burying under the rug years before and being so busy I, before 2020, I didn't have the opportunity to sit down and deal with these issues. God was dealing with them. So fast forward 2020, still building that relationship with God, still wanting to draw closer to him, still wanting to draw near to him. And now let's roll into 2021. 2021 was a time where I'm pretty sure I had been saying this before, but I was still building my relationship with God, wanted to get closer to him, wanted to know him more, just seeking God's face, going to Bible studies, listening to podcasts about God, listening to a whole lot of sermons, reading my Bible, worshiping in, in my room, doing all of these things. And one prayer that I prayed previously and I still pray to this day is God take away anything that isn't like you anything that you don't think is conducive to my growth remove remove anything or anybody that isn't supposed to be with me or I'm not supposed to be with or I'm not conducive to their growth they're not conducive to mine just prune it out and that has to be one of the most dangerous prayers you can pray because it seems like when you pray one of those prayers, God moves in a split second, okay? They will be gone by tomorrow. <laughs> or that thing that you've asked God to remove seems like it goes by tomorrow. But I had I've been praying that prayer and I'm not sure how soon after that that God just he had started pruning some other things out, which I'll talk about in some videos after this one, about how God been telling me I had to let go of a lot of stuff. So he he'd been he'd been taking things out with me. And I and when you build when you start walking with God, they say come as you are. I know we may hear that a lot, especially in church, come as you are or you may see it come as you are. And that's true. God wants us to come to him as we are. Come dirty, come broken, come with all your tattoos, come with all your piercings, come with how you dress, come with your unforgiveness, come with your heartbreak, 
come with uh, your hurt, your pain, whatever it is, come with it, come broken before God. But just know, you are not going to stay that way and he is not going to allow you to remain the same because God loves us so much that he wants the best for us. And so when he takes us, he transforms us, he molds us, God prunes us. He says in his word that he prunes those that he loves, things that don't bear much fruit, he cuts and clips away. And so I had started experiencing that towards the end of 2019, 2020, 2021. I'm still experiencing it to this day because God continues to do it. So 2021, um, as I'm walking with God, and even before that, as I'm walking with God, he's really starting to deal with me heavy. Okay, Marilyn, all right, you say you want to do this thing with me. Uh, you say you want to cut off some, <laughs> anything that isn't like me. You want me to remove? All right, we got to take this away. And it hurts. All right, we got to take this person away. And that hurts. All right, we got a bad habit you have. We got to kick that out. Um, that that old mindset you have, we got to deal with that out. That has, that has to come out. But there was this one day. This one day when I was taking a nap in my room, I... Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me rewind, let me rewind. All right. So I told y'all I got these nipple piercings in 2019, right? So I got these nipple piercings in 2019. And by the, I want to say end of either the end, I think it was the end of 2020, either the end of 2020 or the beginning of 2021, my nipple piercings started acting up out of nowhere. They, they started having um, some swelling, started having some things, some, uh, what is it, pus? I don't know what it is, but white, yeah, stuff just started coming out. It wasn't a lot, but it was just unnormal to be coming out of my piercings. And I'm like, something don't seem right. I've had these things for about two years They've been perfect all this time. I've never had any issues. They healed perfectly. I wash them all the time. You know, I like I take care of, of I take care of them. And I'm like, what is going on? So I have been having these issues with the nipple piercings. They just started acting haywire, the swelling, the stuff oozing out of them. And I'm like, what is what's going on? what's going on you know and so I text so after some days and just noticing this I text the people I go on google and I find the number of the business that I got the piercings at and I text them and I'm like hey I got my nipples pierced by you guys a couple years ago and I'm starting to have these issues with them what's going on what's wrong how can I fix it and so they say, oh, it's totally fine. It's okay. Just uh, soak them in some saline solution or take a washcloth with some saline solution. Hold it on there. Uh, however, however you want to do, <laughs> whatever you want to do. Soak them in there. Put a washcloth on it, whatever. But they mainly said saline solution, right? So I've been doing that and I still was not reaching I still was getting the same issues. It wasn't getting better. And so I remember taking a nap one day in 2021. It was in the middle of the day, still kind of early. And I lay down like normal, go to sleep like normal, taking my nap. And I had this, I had this encounter with God. I don't, I, it wasn't a dream. It wasn't really a, a vision, but for lack of a better word, I'm going to just say encounter because I know what it's like to dream and I know what it's like to, I don't know what it's like to really have a vision from God, but I know what it's like to dream. And it wasn't a full blown dream, but like I said, for lack of a better word, I'm just going to call it an encounter. And as I was asleep, I could feel 
in my spirit or sense in myself that something was going wrong with my breast area, right? I could I could sense that something was going wrong with it, right? And I could I didn't hear God's voice audibly, but it's as if God was speaking directly to me. He didn't say any words, but I knew that his voice or he was saying without even speaking audibly to me. It's like he was communicating to me without even saying any words. I could hear or feel whatever you want to call it. Take them out. Remove them. And I kid you not. Myself, my body, my soul, something, whatever this is in me. I felt anger rise up inside of me. It, it rose up inside of me. And I started saying this. Why well, I got to take them out? Ain't nobody seeing them. <laughs> and I, and mind you, I'm still asleep. These words aren't physically or audibly coming out of my mouth. But my spirit is saying this thing. So when God says, take them out. I say to him, I catch a whole attitude and I say, what? it's almost as if if I were to be awake and I was actually saying these words, this is exactly how I would word them to God. Why I got to take them out? Ain't nobody seeing them. I caught a whole attitude with him and this was, this was not even... This wasn't while I was awake. So I wasn't fully conscious. But my spirit was awake. My That's the only thing I could think of. My spirit was awake. I knew I was asleep. I was in the middle of sleep and awake. So I wasn't speaking audibly. But it's, it's almost as if I was speaking back to God when he was dropping in me. Take your piercings out. And as soon as I got that, I immediately said, I, I immediately had anger rise up and say, I, I caught a whole attitude, y'all. If, if I were to be awake, it would have been the whole neck roll, the whole, why I got to take them out? Ain't nobody seeing them, you know? That's exactly how I had. And it's, it's just so crazy today to think I caught a whole attitude with God and didn't even know it. And wasn't even trying. <laughs> I wasn't even trying. So I got up. So I sat up in my bed. And I'm like. So I got to take these things out. And I look and I'm like. I look and I'm like. I don't want to take them out. I can, I can still continue, like, I, I can still continue to do the saline solution, you know, and make them better. I, I'm, I'm over here not wanting to immediately take these things out because I'm like, you know, there's nothing wrong with them. You know, I've had these things for two years, and all I got to do is do what the people say, put the little saline on them, and they'll be fine. So being honest, I didn't immediately take them out after getting that instruction from God. I didn't immediately take them out. I caught a whole attitude. Didn't immediately take them out. And I want to say a couple days. If it had to be a couple days, I don't even think it was a whole week that went by. That I was listening to a podcast and this podcast was by a woman that I admire. Her name is Tatum Tamia. Tatum Tamia Ayomike. And she she's a hostess of the Blessed and Bossed Up podcast. And it's for women entrepreneurs who are who want to be and who strive to be uncompromising about their faith. And I admire how she's just so uncompromising, how she's how her relationship with God is just something that I'm like, I, I want to be like that. I strive to be like that. 
And so as I'm listening to her podcast, she's talking about the story of Abraham. I can't even remember the title of this episode, but I do remember her going through the story of Abraham. And if you don't know, and if you do know, Abraham is the father of faith. Abraham is the man that God promised a son when his wife, Sarah, was barren. She, she was way past the childbearing age. And God came to Abraham and said, your wife, well, Sarah, will bear a child. Sarah laughed. She didn't believe it. She didn't believe it. They were so old. It was something that they couldn't even believe. They couldn't even fathom. There's no way God could give me a, a child when we are old. Who about to have a baby when we this old? <laughs> So, from the time Abraham and Sarah got that message to the time that they had, it had been a long time, right, since God had gave them that message. And so they started getting impatient because they had not seen the promised son yet. And they and Sarah told Abraham, Go ahead and sleep with my servant, Hagar. God promised us a son. It hasn't happened yet. Go sleep with my servant, Hagar. So Abraham ends up sleeping with Hagar. Fast forward. Problems end up going on. Yeah. But this still was not the promised son that God had told Abraham and Sarah that he was going to bless them with wasn't until years later mind you they're still old it's still years from when god gave them the promise into when they received the promise and so when abraham finally received the promised son abraham sorry <laughs> when abraham finally received the prime the promised son isaac God then calls Abraham to sacrifice his son, Isaac. And one thing that stood out to me as this episode was going on was how obedient Abraham was. He had been waiting this long for a son. He finally got his promised son. And then God tells Abraham, sacrifice your son. The thing that hit me during this time, and this episode came at a time where I needed it the most. It's almost like God knows, well, it is. God does know when to drop the right messages into your path to fit your exact situation. The thing that hit me, was Abraham, and let me go to it. Let me go to it. This is just going to be like a sit-down video. Um, kind of real, kind of raw. I was thinking about editing it, but I'll just leave it how it is. <laughs> So, Abraham gets tested. So, this is in Genesis 22, right? So, in Genesis 22, God tested Abraham. So, God told a Ab God called Abraham's name. He said, Abraham. And Abraham said, here I am. And then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain. I will show you. And here's the thing that got me. <laughs> In the next verse, it said, Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. 
When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I go, while I and the boy go over there, we will worship and then we will come back to you. As I was listening to this podcast and she was reading this story about Abraham, I had heard the story before. I had read the story before. I knew about it. But what hit in this moment was God gave Abraham an instruction. And when God gave Abraham the instruction, Abraham said, Abraham didn't say anything. Abraham just got up took his donkey, took his servants, took his son that he was supposed to sacrifice, went up to the mountain and said, you know what? I went up and said to his servants, y'all stay here. Me and my son, we about to go up here and worship and we're going to come back to you. In this moment, it hit me and it also hurt me. Abraham didn't catch no attitude. Abraham didn't talk back. Abraham didn't say, but why you want me to sacrifice my son? Didn't you give him to me? Didn't you say this was my promised child? Didn't you say? Abraham didn't say none of that. And in that moment, I was checked. Barely. God told me to take these piercings out. And I immediately, without hesitation, rose up in anger, caught a whole attitude, and said, why, why, why? And then I compare it to the situation with Abraham, who was told to sacrifice his son. He didn't catch no attitude. He didn't have no back talk. He got up. He was obedient and did. And he had so much faith that he told his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. He has so much faith that they were gonna come back. He didn't catch no attitude, no nothing. And this had really hit me at this time. And so after hearing her talk about this on her on her episode, of the story of Abraham and the obedience that Abraham had once God gave him the instruction. Abraham got up and go, got up and went. I'm comparing this little thing that God is telling me to do, like take these nipple piercings out. And I'm like, this has nothing. This doesn't even hold a candle compared to Abraham being told to sacrifice his whole son. Nipple piercings or son. I, I would care more about my child <laughs> than I do some little piercings. And it really went to show me how attached I was to this thing. I would had these things for two years. I didn't think I had that much attachment to them until God exposed it. Until God told me, take these away. And as I was listening to this, I was, I was in my bedroom this day. And she told me. I mean, sorry. (laughs) And when she was talking about the story of Abraham, I was in my room and I started crying. I'm not a big crier, but this really moved me of how much, for one, how disobedient I was being. (laughs) Another thing, how much God loves us to even warn us of the things to do or the things to not do. And it it also just moved me how this message was so fitting for what I was going through at the moment. So that that time of listening to the podcast, towards the end of the podcast, I took the piercings out. I threw them in the trash. As I was crying. Or shit, I I was, I mean, I wasn't, I don't know when I was crying, but. I, I didn't shed a little tear. And I was like, you know what? This is obviously God speaking to me, especially when he is illuminating 
the time where he was Abraham was given the instruction to the time where Abraham just went and did what God told him to do. No back talk. Now, whether Abraham had back talk, I all, I'm just going by what the scriptures say. And I'm assuming he didn't say anything. We don't know what he was thinking, but he did it. And after giving these piercings up, throwing these piercings in the trash, I ain't gonna lie, I was a little salty. But that just goes to show how much attachment I had to these things, and I didn't even know it. I didn't even know it. I threw them in the trash, and lo and behold, y'all, I didn't die. <laughs> you would have thought I would have, you would have thought my whole world was gonna end the way it was hard for me to give these things up. But I didn't die. I'm still alive today to tell you about this story. But the main the main objective of this message is how important it is to be obedient to God. Sometimes, like me, you may do it with a... I'm still working. I'm still working and I have an attitude with God sometimes. But sometimes you're not going to like what God calls you to do. Sometimes you're not going to be comfortable with what he calls you to do with what he calls you to give up but it still pays to be obedient to what he says it still pays to just follow his voice and follow what it is he's telling you to do i do not know why god told me to take those piercings out I have my speculations and my speculation is maybe something was attached to the piercing. Mind you, I got my nipples pierced at a place called Black Cloud Piercings, right? No, this is nothing towards the piercing shop, anything. I honestly had a great experience, a physical experience. They treated me well when I was 19 years old. When I went in 2019, they treated me well. I was in, I was out. I felt okay. But thinking about it years later, I don't know what could have been attached spiritually to these things. I got them done at a place called Black Cloud Piercings. And what do you think about when you hear about a black cloud? You think about darkness. You think about destruction. You think about everything opposite of good, everything the opposite of light. And it just made me think maybe something demonic, or maybe something dark was attached to these piercings spiritually that God was telling me to give these things up for. That could have been the reason. That's my speculation. I don't know. He didn't say why. I just had to do it. And another thing is it could have just been to test me. It could have just been to show what exactly was in my heart. And this reminds me of the scripture. Ah, what's the name of that scripture? Give me one second. It says, I, the Lord, it's in Jeremiah seventeen ten. I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give to each man according to his ways, according to the results of his deeds. I want to do some deeper digging on that scripture, but it, um, what I went through kind of reminded me of that scripture. Um, and there's another one that says... In First Chronicles twenty nine seventeen, since I know, oh my God, that you tried the heart, and it reminded me how I didn't even know. I didn't even know what was in my heart until God tried it. I didn't even know what was in my heart until God tested it. Until God searched it. <laughs> I didn't even know the anger would rise up in me until God told me to take those piercings out. I didn't even know how much attachment I had to these things until God told me to take those things out. 
And what I was saying about my speculations of why God told me to take these things out, it could have been something demonic attached to it, something unclean attached to it. You never know who pierces you. You you don't know who it is putting holes inside of your body and what you walk home with. I, I don't know. It could have opened some it could have opened some doors and maybe God was trying to shut them or maybe God was just testing my obedience maybe it was a mixture of both I don't know maybe God was just searching my heart and um, I wanted this to mainly be a message of just being obedient to God there there are good things attached to your obedience. And from just doing some, just remembering of some some people in the Bible of, of that God has called to do some things and what was attached to their obedience. I, I recall, at least to me, there could be more, but some things that I've remembered about obedience in the Bible is that there are three things that are good for obedience. Obedience protects you. Obedience protects other, can help other people. Or obedience could stop something bad from happening to you, right? So when God called Adam and Eve to be obedient, and he gave them instructions of not eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God knew that if they were to eat that apple or eat anything from that tree, that it was going to separate them, that it was going to cause sin and it was going to cause some division. So God put that parameter in place and said, I don't want you to eat from this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All the other ones have at it. But this is the one that I don't want you to eat off of. That was that's one thing that's one sign of obedience that I can recall that God puts parameters in place because he knows the dangers of what of what that thing is. Another one is obedience what um your you being obedience will save the lives of other people. Example, Jonah. When God gave Jonah the instruction of going to the people of Nineveh uh, to get them to repent, God gave Jonah and told them, go, go, go talk to the people of Nineveh. And Jonah was disobedient. <laughs> Jonah did not want to go. So much to the point where he was willing to jump off of a boat into the ocean just so he didn't have to go. But God was calling Jonah to this people and God wanted Jonah to be obedient because through his obedience, other people were going to be saved. So that's two. God could call you to be obedient to prevent something bad happening to you, save your life, save someone else's life. And there was another one I had. God, there was another one I had that I can't remember. That I can't remember. Hopefully I remember it. Oh. Um, save your life. Oh, and then the one I just, the one I just was talking about, the one with Abraham, uh, where God may just be trying to test you. God may just be trying to test, test you, like with Abraham, and God was calling Abraham to sacrifice his son, his only son. And God, even after... 
and God, even after telling Abraham to sacrifice his son, Abraham goes on the altar. And as soon as Abraham is about to slay his son, it says in Genesis chapter 22, verse 12, God says, do not lay a hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. And so these are some things that I've just been learning about obedience, how God may have you be obedient to test you. Like with Abraham, God may have you be obedient because he knows the dangers behind whatever it is that you do. Just like with the just like with Adam and Eve, God knew the dangers if they were to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then um, attached to your be obedience could be you saving yourself or you saving someone else. Just like with Jonah, when God was calling Jonah to go speak to the people of Nineveh and he was being disobedient. <laughs> um, but God truly wanted to save those people and so he called Jonah to go. So that has been my story um, of obedience. I'm still working. I'm still learning more about God. And not only that, but I'm still working on not having the whole attitude. I'm still working on not, not giving God a whole lot of back talk. Because I think about somebody like Abraham and I'm like, Marilyn, God is not calling you to do nothing as deep as that. And I just want to say that God uses times like this to prepare you. And that's one thing that I've been thinking about is, is how God is going to prepare me for things that he's going to call me to do in the future. This one little incident of giving up a piercing is just training ground for me hearing God's voice and being obedient when he calls me to be obedient in bigger areas. Yes, it he was calling me to give up a, a nipple piercing, but God could call me to give up a relationship one day when everything seems like it's going good. God could call me to walk away from a job when everything is going good. God could call me to sacrifice my business. God could call me to walk away from something that I that seems to be perfect. God could call me to sacrifice some things that maybe other people are attached to. And I'm like, God, you sure you want me to do that? But it shows me that even in this moment, this is training ground and how God has been working behind the scenes of purging the things that may not be seen. Nope. And when I caught that attitude, I was like, why well, I got to give it up? Ain't nobody seeing it. God had been working behind the scenes of having me purge or he, him purging the things that are hidden that are behind closed doors but still mean a lot to him the things that nobody sees still mean a lot to God he still wants you to be righteous behind closed doors he still wants you to have a heart after him behind closed doors he still wants you to live right when nobody else is watching So yeah, um, if you have any questions or um, if you're struggling with being obedient to God, I hope this helps you. You may not be dealing with giving up a piercing or maybe you are. Maybe this is confirmation for you. But your thing could be maybe God is calling you to give up a relationship. Maybe God is calling you to sacrifice some bad habit that you had. I know I had some and I'll probably be doing some videos on those as well. But God could be calling you to sacrifice some things. And this is just a message on just why it pays to be obedient. Excuse me. I don't know what could have happened had I still had those piercings today. But I'm glad that I gave them up. And I honestly feel amazing without them. I honestly forget that I had them often. I, I honestly don't even remember them. I don't even remember them days, to be honest. Because I've, I've, I've felt amazing after taking them out. Of course, I had a little attitude a little, a little bit of minutes after. But the next day, I was fine, you know. But 
yeah if you have any questions <laughs> feel free to ask me i'll try to get to them if i don't know the answer i'll just let you know girl i don't know <laughs> or i don't know um you're just gonna have to pray about it seek god about it i don't have the answer to everything i'm still learning i'm still learning how to not have an attitude with god <laughs> I'm still learning to uh, obey God's voice whenever he tells me because a lot of things that God calls us to do are never comfortable and are never things that he and are never things that we truly want to do so yeah I hope you guys have an amazing night I hope you continue to pursue God continue to seek his face continue to build your relationship with him get to know him say god i want to know you for myself i hear what this person says i hear what the pastor say i know what the people at church say but i want to know you and in his word he says he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him you will be rewarded <laughs> um god will you know um and, and he also says if you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me. So do not stop in your pursuit of God. Continue to seek him. Continue to ask him to build a relationship with you. Just you and him. Just you and him. Just you and him. For me, it's been behind closed doors, in my room, in my car, any private place that I could find, just talking with him. And it's been amazing. It's been amazing. And I've definitely seen the rewards of it. And I'm not even talking about the physical things, but I've seen God reward me with just more faith, more peace, more love, more joy. I'm just diligently seeking him. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Is there anything else I could add? But yeah. Be on the lookout for more videos. I definitely have some ones coming and they're actually ones I'm a little bit of you know I'm gonna require a little bit more studying and a little bit more uh I don't even know the word but yeah so if you want to see more subscribe to my channel um talk to me in the comments what are some things that God calls you to give up in your life that you really didn't want to give up and it was hard what are some things that you're still struggling to give up or how are you struggling to being obedient to God? And when was a time that God called you to be obedient and you had an attitude or you absolutely didn't want to do it or you had a Jonah moment where you was running? <laughs> so just let me know. I would love to hear more about that. I hope you guys have an amazing day, week, wherever you are right now. <laughs> um, yeah. So. Bye. See ya.